Welcome to Tsuchi This Week. I'm Mary Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up, we learn a few tips on how to stay fit and healthy during the Lunar New Year holiday. Tsuchi's Humanitarian Center and Tsuchi Hospitals across Taiwan extend their well wishes to Master Zhen Yin. And Jingxin Village residents bring back nearly extinct farming crops to revive their community after Typhoon Morakot. The tradition of the Chinese New Year's is for families to reunite and enjoy meals together. However, as some people put on extra weight during this time, today we are going to introduce two New Year's dishes which are not only easy to make but healthy as well. Today is the second day of the Lunar New Year, so I would like to wish everyone a Happy New Year. I would also like to introduce two New Year's dishes, both of which you will find to be healthy and delicious. Seasoning includes salt, flour, and pepper, and the main ingredients are carrots, celery, and cooked peanuts. First, blend and filter the raw peanuts, keeping the lid over residue. Next, after rinsing the carrots and celery, no peeling is required before chopping them into cubes. We add a bit of diced celery to bring out the taste. Color-wise, the diced carrots will do. The main ingredient is the peanut residue. Add flour and seasoning as well as the remaining ingredients, then mix equally. Take out a small handful, mold it into palm size, and it is ready to be pan-fried. We need to let it simmer because all the ingredients are raw. For a golden color, we have to cook it under a small flame. When both sides are golden crispy, the New Year's cake is ready to be dished up. However, before we dig in, there is another New Year dish to learn. Seasoning includes salt and plum vinegar. Main ingredients are carrots, bean sprouts, and broccoli. You can eat this part of the broccoli too. Just slice it into thinner pieces. Broccoli stems are often thrown away as kitchen waste, but here, after slicing it and adding some salt, it can be used as part of another dish. Next, add bean sprouts and carrots to the salted water to be boiled. Once cooked, they are ready to be taken out of the pot. Plum-flavored vinegar tastes both sweet and sour, so we only need to add this as a seasoning. Boiled broccoli and small tomatoes can be used as garnish. As you can see, the two New Year's dishes are easy to prepare, and you'll be amazed at how good they taste. According to the Ministry of Health and Welfare, 40% of Taiwanese tends to gain an average of 1.7 kilograms during the Lunar New Year holiday. In our next report, let's learn a few tips on how to enjoy the holiday in a healthy manner. During the Chinese New Year, many people tend to indulge in too much food. In addition, seeing the profit that can be generated during the holidays, many stores have set up booths filled with Chinese New Year treats. Did you know that most of the Chinese New Year trees are high in calories? Let's take this Taiwanese rice tree as an example. A serving is 510 calories, while a bowl of rice is only 280 calories. The reason why Taiwanese rice treats are high in calories is because they are made with a large amount of more sugar and have to be deep fried. Another popular treat that is consumed during the holidays are nuts such as pistachios and cashews. Looking at this spoonful of oil, many don't even dare to consume it. But did you know that this amount of oil is equivalent to the amount found in 15 cashews or 30 pistachios? Although experts suggest that nuts can prevent heart disease, if excessive amounts are consumed, it can eventually lead to heart problems. Nuts are good for patients with heart diseases, but if excessive amounts are consumed or if the oil used during cooking is not restricted, this can lead to health problem. Furthermore, for those suffering from high blood pressure, high cholesterol or high blood sugar, extra caution is required. When we talk about high blood pressure, products that everyone should be aware of are soy sauce or pickle products. Pickle food tends to be high in sodium, so it may lead to an increase in blood pressure. When cooking hot pot broth, the best way is to use vegetables as the base. The fiber in the vegetables will not only increase satiety, but also the sweetness of the soup. People should avoid drinking hot pot broth because it is high in sodium. 
as hot pot dipping sauce is also high in calories, the correct way to eat hot pot is to consume the vegetable first and only use a small amount of sauce. Furthermore, one should avoid reheating leftovers because it will increase the sodium level, causing harm to our kidneys. Next, let's learn some exercises that can keep us fit during the Chinese New Year holidays. Enjoying the holidays by sitting in front of the TV for hours seems relaxing. However, it can lead to spinal problems if we are not careful. When we sit like this for a long time, it will add pressure to our spine and may lead to problems such as degradation or inflammation of the spine. When watching TV or movies for a long period of time, people tend to lift their chin, thus causing tension in the muscles of the neck. When we sit in the same spot for too long, we tend to lift our chin. The first thing to do is to push our chin back in, keep your hands still and put your two arms behind your head. Who says you have to go to the gym to exercise? A chair at home is enough. Firstly, sit straight up on the chair and lean back. Secondly, use two hands to hold onto the bottom of the chair. Lift one hand and push it head slightly to the other side and stay in this position for three seconds and then switch sides. Furthermore, after eating too much during the holidays, many tend to have digestive problems. To help, the easiest way is to massage your stomach. Push lightly from the bottom right and up. Next, move clockwise until you reach the bottom left around the blader. To improve digestion, one can simply massage the stomach or use a warm compress. However, the best way to lose those extra calories is still exercise. To mark the year of the horse, staff members of the Ciji Humanitarian Center in Guangdu extended their New Year's greeting to Master Zheng Yin through a video conference call. As well, medical staff from the Ciji Hospital across the island took time to see off the past year. But first, let's take a look at how medical staff of the Taipei Ciji Hospital have shown their determination to pass the medical center accreditation schedule for next year. To celebrate the Lunar New Year, medical staff of the Taipei City Hospital joined in a stage performance as their collective goal for the year to come is to pass the Medical Center accreditation. I wish all living beings happiness and a life free from disasters. In the Taichung City Hospital, the medical staff joined in a martial art performance to welcome in the new year. Through the martial art exhibit, the medical staff from over 20 departments demonstrate their team spirit. Staff from Daoling City Hospital showcase their creativity to mark the Lunar New Year. Doctors record a light-hearted clip to teach members of the public how to keep healthy. In 2013, Hualin City Hospital passed the Medical Center accreditation for the fifth time. I hope the seven city hospitals across the island will continue to carry out medical humanitarianism in the years to come. Thanks to city medical staff's collective efforts over the past year, members of the public can enjoy medical service with city's humanitarian twist in the year ahead. Also extending their New Year's blessings to Master Zhen Yin are staff members of the City Humanitarian Center, who vowed to continue their effort in spreading love and compassion across the globe. I wish everyone a happy New Year and a prosperous future. During this chaotic time with so many disasters around the world, we human beings need to cultivate our own wisdom and care for those in greater need with a compassionate heart. The ITV CEO Tang Jianming points to the news that Taiwanese chose fake as the word of 2013, reflecting a climate of mistrust in society. Thus, Master Zhen Yin hopes that the ITV will keep up its efforts. Seeing off the old year, staff members of Dai TV vow to shoulder the responsibility to continue to spread Siji's humanitarian spirit across the globe.
Prior to the Lunar New Year, Cixi volunteers at the Zichang Recycling Station in Zhanghua decided to hold a charity sale to sell secondhand items, with all proceeds going to Dai TV. Meanwhile, recycling volunteers in Banqiao showed their commitment to Cixi recycling missions. In just four hours, three trucks of recyclables were collected. Let's rewind to see how volunteers gathered them all together. At their first stop, volunteers are picking out useful items from a pile of garbage. Yes, a lot. Households are throwing away their unused items. Next, recycling volunteers go to a community-based recycling point where they loaded a bounty of recyclables onto the truck. At their last stop, they arrive at a shopping district and a government agency to collect unused items. Back in Banqiao's Xiangse Recycling Station, another group of recycling volunteers are busy categorizing recyclable items. Uh, After the long hours of hard work, our hands are weaker, yet our hearts are still full of strength. Showing their dedication to Tiji's recycling mission, these volunteers say they will soon be back to work on the first day of the Lunar New Year. In central Taiwan's Zhanghua, recycling trucks deliver recyclables to the recycling station. The amount of recyclables is unbelievable. Normally we can finish our work in the morning, but now we need to work in the afternoon too. Households have cleared away a large amount of garbage. Residents can even be seen personally bringing their recyclables for recycling. Some broken home appliances and cardboard. In piles of recyclables, volunteers find some usable items. This toaster is good in shape. We'll give it to someone who needs it. Check this out. The packaging is intact. The earphones inside are new. This water bottle is brand new. Some of the home appliances are still usable after repair. We want to give these unused items a second lease on life and give them to someone who needs them. Therefore, recycling volunteers plan to hold a charity sale with these second-hand items. The items here are cheaper. We can help reduce excessive waste. 86-year-old Mrs. Yang has been unable to move around easily following her knee surgery, so she bought an electric car at the recycling station. I'm satisfied with the second-hand items here. The volunteers are nice to me. They take care of seniors like me. Through volunteer second-hand items campaign, everyone can take part in safeguarding our environment. <laughs>
Looking at the problem from a different angle, Mr. Chen is thankful for all the life lesson he has learned. In Kaohsiung, the 8-8 floods damaged a small community named Jingxing, forcing two-thirds of the residents to move away in the aftermath. However, those who stayed behind were determined to revive the community. <laughs> This morning, a few of Kaohsiung's Jingxing residents are visiting a newly built bamboo hut. In the picture is a community elder who everyone affectionately calls Grandma Crocodile. <laughs> this weekend, Grandma Crocodile is having a great time, as many old friends have come back to visit. <laughs> this community has not been this festive for a while, as the town almost disappeared a while back. <laughs> Located in the mountains, the residents of Jingxing faced massive rock slides during the 8-8 floods. Afterwards, the possibility for further landslides was a concern for the Soil and Water Conservation Bureau. There is still a possibility for fragmentary landslides. If it rains too heavily, rocks will tumble, and this could be another disaster waiting to happen. Thus, if a typhoon hits the area, residents would be forced to evacuate. And it's this type of uncertainty that has caused two-thirds of the residents to move away. We have about 30 households left, around 100 residents, but some people's thinking is that they want their last days to be where they were born. Grandma Crocodile is one who shares that thinking. She shows off her plot of land where she grows upland rice, a farming crop that has been lost to the Pingpu tribe for some 20 years. Our generation owner had to plant these. We need to pass it on to the next generation. We have a sense of duty to pass on what our ancestors left us to the next generation. They can't disappear with us. So if we revive our cultural industries, then when the young return, they will have a source of income waiting for them. The Jingxing community has continued the agricultural life of Taiwan as the older generation strives to improve economic opportunities. Growing alongside the upland rice is rami, which is also a nearly extinct crop. Rami is tough, just like the residents of Jingxing, who have fought to keep their roots firmly in their hometown. Besides reviving traditional farming crops, residents here have also sought government and institutional support to help them showcase their creativity. The community has since gained a renewed sense of life, and the weekends are filled with people returning to their hometown to reconnect. If the EA flood didn't happen, we would not have realized the value of our hometown. Now others who have moved away know we are promoting this community, so they might consider coming back to do their part of maintain it. <laughs> Although it's difficult to gather all the resources needed to revive a community, culture has been the glue that binds everyone together, as all fight to bring back a better and stronger tomorrow. As Typhoon Haiyan left widespread devastation throughout Central Philippines, Tsuji's implementation of its cash reward program has assisted many families in the rebuilding process. Now, two months after the typhoon, the ITV reporters returned to Tacloban and saw how residents there have found hope and stability thanks to the help of Tsuji. After many twists and turns, what lies at the end of every tunnel is an opportunity. 37-year-old Leonisa has just returned from the market with goods for her store, a small business she started after the typhoon. With job opportunities rare in the mountains, grocery store business is the most common here. It costs around 5,000 pesos to start up a business, and with prices skyrocketing after the typhoon, business has been difficult. 
Yung kopi ko nga dati, 46 lang. A strand of instant coffee packs was 46 pesos before. Now it costs 75 pesos. Even the prices of smaller items have gone up. The small business was started by Leonisa and her husband after having saved up enough money from city's cash for work program. The monetary support has brought them a sense of security and hope for the future. I am thankful for the Siji Foundation. I am thinking to use the money to expand my store so I could better sustain our livelihood. All 146 households here in Takloban City's Barangay 103A fell victim to Typhoon Haiyan's destruction. Traveling deeper into the mountains, we came across the Balmes couple, whose home stands in the center of a field. This is the work which my father-in-law left us. He has passed on, so now we have to take it over. The Balmes have to wait four months before they receive money from their rice harvest, after which they will use the money to purchase more seedlings. The family has been content with this way of life until Hai Ying took away their belongings in its wake. Wanting to have a sturdy home but lacking in means, the Balmings used whatever materials they could find. After hearing of City's Cash for Work program, Adolfa immediately signed up. She later purchased two bags of seedlings with a three-day pay. The Balmings couple said that City's compensation of 500 pesos a day was a great help for them. Never did they imagine that there were those who were willing to help them without expecting anything in return. These are tears of happiness because you came here to help us. Thank you, Tsiji Foundation. Thank you, Master Zhen Yan. I am thankful to Tsiji, not only for helping us, but all of Takloban. Within a month's time, Tsiji's cash for work program has helped 280,000 residents store a semblance of their previous lives. The uh, Chuchi Foundation is the only foundation I know that's giving outright cash to the people. And uh, that will also help uh, jumpstart the economy, the local economy, and it will also now give uh, some, the people some sense of security. Parts, residents of Takloban will be sure to see the calm after the storm. At the end of the show, we go to Malaysia and show you how students of Kuala Lumpur Sky Kindergarten celebrated the Lunar New Year. Some children try their hand at writing spring couplets, while others made chocolates to express their gratitude to their teachers. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. See you next week.